The first big test of whether the public was won over by the Prime Minister's speech will come in the North East the day after tomorrow. In Hartlepool, the town Peter Mandelson abandoned for the European Commission. It has to choose a replacement MP. Normally, it's considered the sort of place where you could put a Labour rosette on a corpse and see it sent to Westminster. Michael Crick, the man without whom no by-election will be complete, reports now from Hartlepool. This is a tale of four folk from the northeast. Meet Jeremy. He's from Newcastle, 30 miles north. And Jody. She's from just beyond Darlington, 25 miles west. But Ian hits the bullseye. He lives right in Hartlepool. And Steve is another local resident. Trivial, perhaps, but many people in Hartlepool do care if candidates are local even though their old MP, Peter Mandelson, came from London. And ironically, it's Labour who are stressing their new man's local roots. Well, we don't want anybody out of the town. If somebody's out of the town doing it, it's a waste of bloody time, isn't it? We can't get in touch with anything, whereas when they're in the town, we can go straight down and see you, couldn't we? And I live in the town. I know you do, that's what I'm born saying. Born and bred. Ian yeah. Wright, born and bred in Hartlepool, therefore he is the man. Yes. OK? Yes. Except, why then did they pick Mr Mandelson? Well, that's, he that's wasn't right. born and bred in Hartlepool. Absolutely. And actually, actually, I don't think that has anything to do with who should be your MP, no. because you'll be dealing with national things. Maybe, but by-elections can often be downright daft. Take last week at Teesside Airport, where the Lib Dems paid a jazz band at least £200 to serenade Charles Kennedy as he stepped off with his candidate on the way home from his speech at the Lib Dem conference. They'd even rolled out the red carpet, all 12 feet of it. We were overwhelmed. So what do you think the most memorable line was from Mr Kennedy's speech? I know, it's hard to choose, isn't it? <laughs> I have the same I, problem myself. Let, let, me, let me say, I, I am a fan of Mr Kennedy, I have to say. I'm well, I think you'd better say that because... But, oh, but I haven't right. memorised his speech. Yeah. Yeah. Can you remember anything from it? I mean, any lines from it? I can't remember any individual lines. It doesn't mean I wasn't listening. <laughs> A barrister, Jodie Dunn seems pretty articulate on the doorstep, though unlike other by-elections, the war is less of an issue here. I'm more than minded, but I'm anti-Europe. OK. Uh, and I uh, think the Lib Dems are pro. Yes, I mean, we are a pro-European party. Can I ask you to at least consider us for next week on Thursday? And the reason I say that is because we are the only party that can beat Labour. Her campaign's been blighted, however, by an entry in her internet diary saying that during one canvas, everyone she met was either drunk, flanked by an angry dog, or undressed. Remarks seized by opponents, brushed off by friends. I think she'd had a pretty hard day and went home and let off a bit of steam. What I think is pretty curious is the way that the Labour campaign has sought to uh, analyse this and make it a sort of central issue in the campaign. Well, it's pretty disrespectful, though, isn't it? You know it's going to be published. The central issue here is whether or not the hospital can be saved. And for Labour to devote so much time to what have been, been in effect some quite unpleasant personal attacks, I think it's a clear measure of just how rattled the Labour campaign is. <laughs> Several leading Labour members in Hartlepool told Newsnight today they don't like the style of their party's campaign here. It's certainly one of the most negative I've seen in a by-election. I don't see what I'm here to apologise for. No Their bus blares Jody Dunn's voice refusing to apologise while they've erected mock Lib Dem posters opposite their rival's HQ. One of the most negative Labour leaflets of this campaign has been this one, headlined Trust, in which Labour accuses the Lib Dem candidate Jody Dunn of being two-faced and not talking straight over this thorny issue of where she lives. But can we actually trust this leaflet? Jodie Dunn says that this quotation here, which Labour attributes to her on the 1st of August of I live in Hartlepool, is a lie, she says. She never said that. Newsnight has pressed Labour officials several times for hard evidence of that quote, which after all is in quotation marks. What they say now is that it's a paraphrase of the kind of things she's been saying. In terms of the nomination papers, why has she felt the need to put a Hartlepool address? Well, she's living here for the duration of the campaign, but on the 1st of August, she never said that. She says that's a lie. She I has a point, a doesn't she? 
I think it's a question. Of, isn't it a question of your character too, in that you're making up quotations? But as I, I'd make the contrast between the Conservative candidate, who's been quite open, and there's no criticism there that he lives in Newcastle, and that's fair enough. The Liberal candidate, in contrast, is saying, you know, one thing, and by her actions are doing another. And so I think so you Liberal stand by that quote. She said that on the first of August. I stand by the fact that she's. Claims so you don't stand by the quote. I'm standing by the fact that she claims she's so, in Harvey Club. And we're expected, as it says there, trust. Yes. We should trust you. Yes. With a quote like that. That's, yes. You know, you haven't yet said where she... I mean, it seems to me it's totally fabricated, that quote. No, I'm, I'm standing by that. Mr Wright, an accountant and counsellor, has been backed here by the actress Liz Dawn, Vera Duckworth on Coronation Street, though she seemed a tad out of touch on her politics. So do you think Mr Wright will be an improvement on the previous MP? Which MP? He's trying to tie me up in knots uh -huh. <laughs> Well, Mr Wright's local, whereas the previous one wasn't. Oh, I don't know. I don't know about Hartley Road, do I? So what's Mr Mandelson doing now? I don't know. <laughs> Should don't... I know? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's in Brussels. Oh, I see, right. Yeah. Right. And what's he doing there? Have you seen... Oh, go away. <laughs> <laughs> You're a boring crap. <laughs> The only real sign of Peter Mandelson's ghost in Hartlepool at the moment is on the posters for the UK Independence Party. Europe is hardly a big issue in this campaign. Things you have to do to get elected, yeah. <laughs> UKIP's candidate Stephen Allison is well known locally, having in the past donned several different political guises. I, I was a member of the Labour Party, yes. You are in the Labour Party, and then you were in what half party after that? The, uh... No, I actually uh, assisted with the uh, previous... You were the agent for the Conservative yeah, candidate, yes. and, then, and then you were uh, an independent, yeah. well, and now you're in UKIP, so presumably you'll be joining the Liberal Democrats soon. Uh, no, because one thing that unites just about every other party is actually the we don't like the Liberal Democrats. Liberal Democrats, to me, don't stand for anything in particular other than a united federal Europe. The serious talk here, beyond just their own ranks, that UKIP could really take off in this election by beating the Tories into fourth place. That would be even worse news for the Conservatives than the last three by-elections, where they slipped from second to third each time. Uh, I normally like to ask people, first of all, if there's anything that you would like to see improved about this town and, and the life here. Is everything. Anything? What's everything. Demolish it and start from the beginning. Yeah, you What's don't sound a very happy man. The Tory candidate, Jeremy Middleton, is a successful businessman and clearly able. I'm the only candidate who has a plan to remove every hard drug addict from the streets of Hartlepool. We have a policy that says we're going to give every hard drug addict a choice. You either go into residential rehab and get fixed or you have to go to prison. It's pretty dramatic, but it yeah. takes every single hard drug user well, off I've the got streets. Son, you can take him. Well, you know what we'll do? if he goes into rehab. At the end of it, when he's clean, no criminal record. Middleton's main message on crime does impress voters, but he was chosen very late as a candidate, appears rather earnest, and doesn't seem very confident he'll win. So you're having trouble getting your message across, you think? I think it's difficult. Um, most people don't trust any of the politicians to make any difference. So when you've got something real and tangible to say, then uh, it can be, uh, be very frustrating. OK, gentlemen. The Tory chief whip has dragooned MPs here, but his party looks set for more grief. Yet Hartlepool was a Tory seat 40 years ago. There's a danger of you coming forth in this campaign. There's a danger of me losing my team here because there's so many on the streets today. That's what I'm worried about at this precise moment. For Labour to lose the seat of their former campaign wizard Peter Mandelson would be embarrassing. But for the Tories ahead of their conference to fall behind UKIP would be far worse. Not since the war has the main opposition party come forth in an English by-election. Well, a full list of candidates in this Thursday's Hartlepool by-election can be found on our website at bbc.co.uk forward slash newsnight. For those of you who just can't wait, here is the complete list of candidates taking...
Yeah, swamp the town, but at long last, voting in the Hartlepool by-election is almost upon us. It's a campaign that's caused a mini-boom for hotels in the town. But, as our political editor reports, there are those who can't wait for Friday. This town has been awash with politicians trying to whip up excitement in the whole process. But there's a new phenomenon in Hartlepool. It's called by-election fatigue. It's dragged on quite a while and you just get sick of them coming on putting papers in your door that you don't want. There's quite a lot, isn't there? You know, it's usually it's just the three parties, isn't it? And when you, when you get this amount, you're a bit confused now, I think, really. There's just been so many candidates. And, and now my poor simply just misses out the middleman and goes straight in the bin. And it's not just the voters who've had enough. Even poor old Post has been stressed out. There's been massive delays to the Post here in Hartlepool and the Royal Mail are partly blaming the number of leaflets they've had to deliver. And sensing the public mood, the local newspaper has cut back its coverage. Over the last couple of three days, we've wound down a bit uh, because we're reaching saturation point now uh, and there's only so much you can see. Uh, and, and we're at the silly point of by-election now, anything goes. Uh, and, and we are not in the business of repeating some of the rubbish that's going around. But not everyone's exhausted. Tourist attractions like this brewery are amongst those who could benefit from the priceless publicity the by-elections brought. We've been trying for a long time now to convince more and more people that there's a real change for the better going on in the town. Um, we've, we've done a lot of active marketing ourselves to that effect, but having the, the, elect, the by-election as well is, in that sense, a real godsend, and in a sense it just raises the profile of the town. So regardless of who becomes the town's MP, even the froth and fuss of this campaign could bring a brighter future to Hartlepool. Richard Moss there. Well, there are 14 candidates in total standing in the by-election. Here they are. But you can also study the full list of candidates at bbc.co.uk slash news under politics. Now, in a very short time, we shall discover the verdict of the voters of Hartlepool on Tony Blair's government. It was once the sort of seat the Labour Party could take for granted as being in its back pocket. In today's by-election caused by the Prime Minister's decision to send his friend Peter Mandelson to Brussels, it had to fight hard just to keep the seat. Michael Cricks there. Uh, Michael, what's the feeling? Did they succeed? Well, I've spent much of today chowering around the polling stations in Hartlepool, talking to voters as after they'd voted. And really what we've been seeing here is, in a funny way, two by-elections, one between Labour and the Lib Dems to see who comes first, and the second contest, really, in a peculiar way, to see who comes third and fourth out of UKIP and the Conservatives. But unlike other places where I've done this, an extraordinary number of voters simply haven't been willing to tell me today how they voted. And that makes it much harder to call. Just as in the last three parliamentary by-elections, Hartlepool voters today deserted both Labour and the Conservatives in huge numbers. But maybe not enough for the Lib Dems' Jodie Dunn to become the town's MP, rather than Labour's youthful contender, Ian Wright. It's been a lively contest, with voters exhausted by the leaflets and regular stunts. Today, supporters of Fathers for Justice scale the civic buildings. But many voters have stuck with Labour. <laughs> the best party in the world, Labour. Did you? Did you think yeah. about changing at all? No, no, no. What do you good think fella. Of... Right. He's a good fella. He's a gentleman. Ian Wright. And uh, you, no question of you switching to anybody else? Nobody, no. What no. did you think of the other candidates? They were all right, but I think they were a bit false. A bit false? Yes. What do you mean by that? Well, Jodie Dunn, for instance, um, called a few people in the town, said she was going to do this, do that. But I don't think she will, to be quite honest. Well, I voted Mr Wright. Mr Wright. Yeah. You, know, you always vote Labour, did you? Do yeah. you? Did you think of switching, perhaps? No. I've voted with... I've always voted Labour. Right. Did you think of switching to any of the others? Yes, I did. You see, it's my age. You, you've done Labour all your life. You just don't change, do you? Today is polling day. Hold on tight. Vote Conservative, vote Middleton today to make a difference. The Tory contender the Jeremy Middleton was still out on the streets this morning, though really it was a damage limitation exercise. He must have known that this became a two-horse race between Labour and the Lib Dems long ago. The main candidates were friendly enough when they bumped into each other this lunchtime, but this contest has been extremely bitter, with the two frontrunners especially trading insults and thousands of people have clearly switched from Labour to the Liberal Democrats. I voted for Jodie Dunn. 
Is that a, is that a change? It is a change from the Labour why, government in Hartlepool. Why, why have you changed? Um, I think Labour's been in Hartlepool long enough. Jodie Dunn. Do you normally vote Liberal Democrat? No. So what's made you change? Hello. I'm a fireman. The Labour government's done nothing for me, and it's done nothing for the working class. Were there any particular issues that were also made you uh, change your vote? Overall, everything. No, uh, well, uh, I wouldn't say. They are all saying they're going to do the same, aren't they? So who did you go for, the Lib Liberal Democrats? I'm not telling you. <laughs> yes. Yes. And well, the last general election I voted Labour. And what's made you change? Uh, just the way the campaign's been run, it all seems to be about what the other party's going to do and not what the party that's actually saying it's going to do. Do you think it's been too understand? negative? I think pol all politics have become negative. Hartlepool is a famously parochial community, and many voters today expressed a firm preference for a local candidate, partly in reaction to Peter Mandelson. That's good news for Labour, whose man was born and bred here, and to the UK Independence Party, who also had a local contender, even though Europe has barely featured as an election issue. Who did you vote for? <laughs> Stephen Allison. You voted for UKIP? Yep. What made you do that? What is that? You that? I voted for the UKIP party. Right. Do you normally vote UKIP? Uh, no, I don't normally, but there's, we've got an excellent local candidate here that I know personally and I think um, he's going to be a good candidate for the job. Who do you, who would you normally vote for? Uh, I would normally vote for the Conservatives. Or and was it important for you to vote for a local candidate? Yes, Why yes. is that? Well, he knows the people of Hartlepool. He was born in Hartlepool. So does that and mean you, knows... you didn't think much of Peter Mandelson because he, he didn't come from Hartlepool? Well, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Iraq hasn't been as big an issue as elsewhere, but crime has featured strongly, and local issues. What's uh, made you vote for Jodie Dunn? Um, the hospitals and everything like that. Just wanted to save that. Um, I work there, so <laughs> obviously all I keep it. Do you normally vote uh, Liberal Democrat? No, Labour. And uh, what's made you change? Uh, mainly about the hospital. Do you think a lot of people around here have, uh, have changed their Change, vote? probably, yes. Quite a few I've been talking to have changed. Perhaps the most serious news is for the Tories. With a general election only a few months away, they should have been serious contenders here, not struggling with UKIP to come third. Well, now, Michael, um, what happened in that tussle, as far as you can read it, between Labour and the Lib Dems? Well, I, I just do not know. I mean, if you were to put a gun to my head, and you'd probably love to do that, I'd, I'd say that Labour would win it. But it, I say that with no certainty at all, simply because of the numbers of people who refused to say, particularly in the Labour wards, refused to tell me which way they were going to vote, which was, you know, m most unusual. I mean, maybe it was because they were ashamed of, of, of switching to someone else, mo mo mostly to the Lib Dems, or maybe they were simply ashamed of, uh, of voting Labour. But it is very difficult. But most of the people here in the count tonight I think probably if you push them would say it, it, it would be a, a narrow, very narrow Labour victory. And uh, the tussle between uh, the Tories and uh, UKIP for third and fourth, fourth place? Well, uh, there, again, I think it's probably the Tories have, have, have come third. Um, that the, the, the talk that there was of UKIP coming third and beating the Tories into fourth place probably won't happen. And that was the, what, what, uh, the evidence I was picking up from voters as I spoke to them. But again, it's, it's difficult to tell here. But, I mean, certainly the Tories have come way behind uh, the Lib Dems or Labour. Uh, their voters hemorrhaged. It was very difficult to find anybody, who, any, anybody who'd, who'd switched to the Tories. I did this evening find a couple of uh, former Labour voters who switched to the Tories, but that was the, the first people all day. Um, and really, that is it's terrible news for my Michael Howard, only, with an election only a few months ahead, in a seat which really the, con the, the Conservatives should, should be aiming to do really well in, if not actually win. Uh, just very briefly, Michael, what, um, what time are you expecting the result? Well, uh, sometime around midnight, I think. Uh, it, it's still not very clear, but uh, so around midnight, uh, I'm afraid, uh, after, the, after the end of the programme. Michael, thanks a lot. Thank you.